Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we'll be building DIY joystick mounts with a few things from the hardware store, one thing from online, and a couple of custom cut plates. I currently have the Gunfighter 3, and you can see that base plate over here in this picture. Um, but I also use the X56 throttle uh, for my old X56 HOTAS. Uh, now let's take a quick look over the uh, parts that we're going to need. First off, we have 20mm M6 T-bolts with matching flange nuts. A pair of 20mm M8 countersink socket head screws. These will hold our top plate in place. The mounting screws that came with the gunfighter. Two M5 countersink socket head screws along with T-bolts. A pair of 90 degree profile joints with M5 set screws. A 250 millimeter section of 3060 profile aluminum extrusion, and a smaller 50 millimeter section for our horizontal joystick support. A pair of 3060 profile plastic end caps, our table clamp, custom machine top plate, and finally our gunfighter base, which has also been custom machined. You can find links to the diagrams of the Gunfighter, X-56, and top plates in the description below. Now to take a look at some of the tools we'll be needing to put this together. I'd really recommend using some kind of thread locker as you're going to be moving your joystick around a lot and you don't want screws falling out. Next we have a pair of needle nose pliers and a selection of Allen key heads. I could tell you the sizes but then I'd have to kill you. Moving on to assembly, we start with our M8 screws. I'm applying some thread locker here. I'm probably doing it wrong. I'm also probably supposed to be using blue thread locker. Do let me know in the comments below. If I do know one thing from experience, it's to close bottles tightly after I use them. We'll come back to the M8 screws soon. But first we're going to take our 90 degree joints and attach them to our main profile and then attach our smaller section of horizontal profile to this. You don't have to screw these on too tightly as you are going to have to adjust these a little bit later. We now take our smaller piece of profile and uh, attach it to the 90 degree joint. Um, you can see that I'm having to slightly loosen the 90 degree joints to fit the profile on there. Move it around a little so that the uh, smaller piece of profile is sitting flush with the larger piece of profile. And uh, you can proceed to tighten those screws that are leading into the smaller piece of profile at this point. Now that the smaller piece of profile is attached to the larger piece, we can move on to the top plate. You can see that I have a small piece of rubber under my top plate. This just stops my table from getting scuffed. If you look into the top section of this profile, you'll see that I've asked my machinist to tap some uh, M8 threads into the holes. We can now go ahead and start installing those M8 screws that we had applied thread locker to earlier. I wouldn't recommend tightening the first screw too far in, just in case the alignment on the second screw is slightly off. Now let's get that table clamp into the mix. These are the T-bolts and flange nuts that we'll be using. I strongly suggest that you install the T-bolts and flange nuts onto the clamp before sliding them onto the profile, as it can be a really fiddly business if you slide the T-bolts into the profile first and then try to put the clamp over the bolts. A really loose finger tightening here should be just about enough. Now let's get that clamp slid onto our profile. Uh, you can see there are a few scratches on my profile as I've actually been using this mount for a fair bit of time now. A very quick finger tightening of those nuts uh, using the magic of editing. And an equal final tightening with the needle nose pliers. I know that what I should have done here is gone from one nut to its diagonal opposite as this gives the optimal fit.
And there we have it. Our table clamp is now installed. This might need a few minor adjustments uh, due to table thickness. With the mount itself all but complete, now all that's really left to do is get that joystick onto the base plate and the base plate onto the mount. We loosely attach the M5 screws and T-nuts to the base plate as this makes for easier installation later when the joystick is actually on top of the base plate. Make sure that your machined and countersinks are facing the bottom side of the plate. There's no use having these on the top of the plate, you're just going to end up with screws sticking out at the bottom. These are the screws that came with the gunfighter, and I actually forgot to include this little tool. It's just another Allen key. This comes with the gunfighter as well. Let's get those holes lined up. Now, the best way to do this really is to get one corner screw in and then try to get the opposite diagonal screw in. This stops the plate from moving around too much. If you're using the X56, uh, the best thing to use is really a 60 millimeter M6 screw. Um, I've used these black bolts to attach my X56 throttle to the plate. Let's get these nice and tight, but not so tight that we're starting to rip some threads. And now finally, let's get this base plate and joystick attached to a mount. I know this looks really, really fiddly, but trust me, it's even fiddlier if you get the T-bolts into the profile first and then try to get your screws into that with that joystick attached. All that's really left to do now is to tighten up those mounting screws and we're good to go. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is my first video, so please do click like if you like this video and subscribe if you want more DIY and cooking videos.